How y'all doing? I'm real rich. Uh, I'm from two really different places. <clears throat> One's a small town outside of Las Vegas named Henderson, Nevada. You probably never heard of it. And the other one's in every rap song. I'm from Compton, California. <laughs> now, this has helped me in some ways, but in a lot of ways it hasn't because <clears throat> my heroin addicted mom growing me up in Compton named me Rick James. <laughs> The high school I went to in Henderson, Nevada, a small town, is called Basic High School. Basic High School. It's so small that they wrote B on the back of the mountain behind the high school. They don't even spell out fucking basic. Just B. Our mascots are the wolves, the base wolves, just dogs, apparently. Being from them two places, I really only know about two things, methamphetamine and barbecue. Those are two things I know a lot about. So picture me filling out a job application. Picture me trying to get a job. First fucking question on the application is name. I gotta fill this shit out. God damn. Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Second question on the application. Education, your background, stuff like that. I gotta write this down. Basic high school. Now I've learned to put the address after that in all these years, because the questions are just terrible. But the third one is where I really just start writing jokes on the back of the application. It's, you know, your hobbies and your activities, they want to know about you, and I got to put down meth and barbecue. None of this stuff has ever gotten me a job, ever. Like I said before, my mother, she was on heroin, and she would go in and out of prison about every four years, like a high school semester, you know? And, uh, Every time she would come out, she would come out with a totally new phase. I'll give you some examples. The first time my mother got out of prison, she was country western. She dressed me up in little jean shorts, cowboy boots, and a vest, and a nice little hat, and sent me out to the Nickerson Gardens for my very first ass whipping. <laughs> the second time she got out, I got to learn a lot. You know, you don't see your mother a lot because she's in prison, you want to learn things. Well, she had a unique way of teaching me stuff. See, this time when she got out, she was a white supremacist skinhead. Everything white power. She started teaching me about that stuff. She dressed me in black jeans. I was about 10 years old. Black jeans, combat boots, and a Harley Davidson shirt. She drew a tattoo, like, with a marker of a swastika right here on where this tattoo is, right here. And she sent me out to the projects for my second ass whipping. Now, this ass whipping, I learned a lot. I learned about Nuremberg trials. I learned about Jim Crow. Okay. I learned about a lot about Alabama and Florida. I learned about the Confederate flag. It was a very knowledgeable ass whipping. <laughs> the third time she got out, it was all cool though because huh, she came out of r and I say r and I don't really know what else to say, black. An uh, R&B lesbian. So her whole shit changed. She had a black girlfriend named Taco that looked just like Joe Frazier. Okay. And by this time, I'd been jumped into a gang. I was kind of a little stupid hoodlum. And Taco came, and it was cool because I finally had a dad. You know what I'm saying? She got me to register my firearm. She said, you're going to be white. We're registering a firearm. We're going to get you a hole in the wardrobe. So that shit was really, really cool. I like to smoke weed. I'm sure some of you like to smoke weed out here. You ain't going to be very vocal. But you like to smoke weed. What's tripped out about getting weed nowadays is weed store security guard. Um, we've all had minimum wage jobs, man. They are what they are. You do enough not to get fired, they pay you enough not to quit. Not weed store security guard. This dude has on combat boots, okay? Camouflage pants, a bulletproof vest. He's got a belt with more stuff on it than Batman. He's got a hair dryer, a gun, a taser, handcuffs, mace, a fan. He's got everything on the thing. Now, all my life, security guard has a security guard t-shirt. If you was really, really, really good, like came in every day, they gave you a collared shirt to say manager on it. Maybe say security in the back. It got me to thinking, looking at the security guard. What other minimum wage job do you see people trying this hard? Like you've never gone to McDonald's and seen a guy come in there in a full chef's outfit, hat, thousand dollar Tony Bourdain knives, talking about I'm gonna invent something today, I'm gonna raise the game. West Coast French toast. 
You never see this shit. Security guard at the weed store, man, that motherfucker's crazy. I got three cards in my wallet. I got a driver's license. I got my EDD card, that's unemployment. And I have my medical, medical, mar medical marijuana card. Now I'm gonna let y'all guess through my priorities which one of those is still valid. <laughs> But every once in a while, I have to go back to Compton. You know, I got family there, I got friends there. And what a lot of people don't know is, in Compton, there's reverse racism. And what it is, is if you go to Compton at night and you're white like this, the police think you're there for drugs. You know what I'm saying? They think you're there for mischief. Now I am. But I don't like it when they just assume that shit. <laughs> See, as I don't have a registered driver's license, these police was pulling me over all the time. I had to figure out a way to get out of this. This was starting to cost me a whole lot of money. So here's what I do. <laughs> as soon as I see him in my rearview mirror, I stop the car hard. I jump right out the front door and I stand in the middle of the street and I look at him. I'm like, really? Really? Now they're out there with their guns, yelling and screaming, but they're taking it back. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, really, rookies? Are you serious? What, what precinct are you from? I've been working on this case for fucking six months. I'm undercover. I'm out here looking for meth and barbecue. <laughs> then they go on and they let me drive home. <coughs> Women have a stereotype that a hard working man is a sexy man, but I, I don't agree. And I'm gonna tell you why. All the time that we've been on the planet, We've been beating and women, raping women until just about, what, 30 years ago we really got our senses straight and was like, no, we can't do this anymore. And all the time on this planet, men have been building and creating things and working. Okay? Do you see the math here? All those guys that are working all those hours are beating and raping women. You know who's not? I'm not. When I'm sitting there playing video games smoke weed unemployed. Now that's sexy. Come on, ladies. That's, that's what we need the new stereotype to be. Let's evolve. One last thing I don't like is we all fart. And you're looking at me crazy. You're looking at me crazy. But you farted. I know you have. And women look at men when they fart and think it's rude. But I don't agree. You see, the last thing you do when you die is you fart. It's the very last thing you do. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen people die in front of me. The last thing you do is fart. First you burp, then you fart. It's called death rattles, all right? 21 grams leaves your body when you die. That's unaccounted for. I can account for that 24 grams. You see, people, your farts are your soul. And every time you let one out, you're just expressing that you love that person. I want to give you a piece of me. Thank y'all for your time. I'm real rich. Overtime for real rich.